our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. In January 2005, the Huygens probe landed on Titan, the biggest of Saturn's moons. It was the first Earth-born object to land in the outer solar system. When I first saw the images from Huygens and the river-like structures on the surface, I thought, ah, oh, it's magic, wonderful, thank you, God. We were all very moved. We were speechless, and it took us weeks to get over it. It worked. It worked. We got there. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion-mile trek to Saturn. The Odyssey started back in 1997 with the launch of the Cassini-Huygens mission, the most ambitious of its kind. After a seven-year journey, it reached Saturn, where its aim was to investigate in detail the giant gas planet and its moons. Where did the planets come from? How did the planets form? How did they grow? How did they change? And I think the fundamental question is, isn't it strange that we live on a planet? How did we come out of the cosmos? Cassini Huygens is looking for the answers in Saturn, the second largest planet in the solar system, its rings and its many mysterious moons. 62 have been counted so far. One of them in particular is of interest to astronomers. Saturn has the jewel in the crown, namely Titan. Titan is the only moon with an atmosphere really that in any way resembles the Earth. It is impossible to see through this atmosphere composed primarily of nitrogen. That's why scientists sent Huygens to investigate. Designed to collect data during its descent, the Huygens probe survived the landing and opened up a whole new world to mankind. We saw landscapes that really resemble what we have on Earth. Huygens landed on a dry riverbed, a dried out lake. What this picture shows is an important fluvial activity, erosion like on Earth. Pebbles of water ice are carried by this liquid, so what the picture suggests is complete fluvial activity. The liquid on Titan's surface is not water like on Earth, it's methane. There are methane rivers, methane lakes. We have counted more than 1,000 lakes, and sometimes it rains on Titan. It rains methane and sometimes ethane too. The existence of methane means there is a complex organic chemistry, and one of the objectives of this mission is to try to understand how complex this organic chemistry is. Data sent back by Cassini suggests methane is not the only liquid on Titan. Scientists believe the core of this moon is made of rocks and oceans of water mixed with ammonia. Ammonia allows water to stay liquid at very low temperatures. Titan is the only other object in the solar system where we have found this very intense, complex and advanced organic chemistry, the kind that brought life to our planet. The presence of atmosphere often leads scientists to believe there could be life on a planet. This is what brought life to Earth four billion years ago, something scientists believe could also be possible on Titan. A planet with its atmosphere is like a stove with cooking going on. And it's that cooking, it's the cooking, the movement around of the atmosphere and the churning around that mixes things up, brings chemicals together, allows them to interact. And that ultimately is what constructs life and things like us. Cassini also told us a lot about another of Saturn's moons, Enceladus 
A small moon located in Saturn's outermost ring, it is a fascinating place. The Voyager missions back in the early 1980s had already provided some information about Enceladus, especially concerning its wide range of terrains. Cassini found out more. When we flew really close, we found that, yes, there was an atmosphere at Enceladus, and the camera found cracks on the surface of Enceladus, and there was water vapor coming out from the surface of Enceladus. If we've got this water vapor plume coming off from the South Pole, the implication is that there's a heat source in the inside of Enceladus. And that's really very surprising because it's very small. And you would have thought that it had cooled down from when it first formed. And so there's a heat source that we just don't understand at the moment. The plumes contain water and organic chemicals. This indicates that, like for Titan, there must be liquid water inside Enceladus. This is a major finding. People have searched on Mars for water. They've searched on our moon for to be able to find water as well. What we didn't expect to find was there was water filling the Saturn system and there's essentially water everywhere. We need to revisit all the models which say that it's impossible to find liquid water beyond five astronomical units or the distance to Jupiter. Now we need to extend the so-called habitable zone to Enceladus, that's 10 astronomical units. That means as far as Saturn. It changes everything. If liquid water is found throughout the solar system, then we have to start over in our quest for life and habitable zones in the solar system. Initially scheduled to end in 2008, the Cassini-Huygens mission has been extended until 2017. That gives us another seven years to investigate Saturn, a planet we knew virtually nothing about before. The goal is not only for astronomers to collect more data about the ringed planet, but also for scientists to find out more about the Earth we live on. If we started with a small book, a little novella that was about Saturn, and indeed, largely imagination. We now have a solid three-volume uh, Baedeker guide to Saturn. But in the end, we're going to have an encyclopedia. Uh, in the end, we will have 100 books, maybe, all of the different aspects of the Saturn system. Um, but equally well, there will be books written about the Earth and books written about Mars, where the information will also be used. There is a lot more to come.